We will now open the April 25th Caribou City Council meeting. And first item tonight is public input. Anyone that would like to speak about any items on the agenda or anything else, feel free to come to the podium and state your name. And Go on. All right. Uh, anyone on council have a conflict of interest with any of the agenda items? Great for me. Anyone else? All right. Uh, consent agenda tonight. License approvals. March 2016 financials. Move the slate. Second. Any questions or comments from anyone? Austin, the our undesignated fund there, or undesignated fund balance. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what that is offhand? I don't write offhand. Okay. I'll give you a call tomorrow and find out. Sure. Uh, all in favor of approving the license and the financials? Are unanimous. Ordinance authorizing land transfer. Manager, please. As the new school project uh, progresses, one of the steps that will be necessary is to transfer the land that is currently Teague Park and the pool land to the RSU. As the council is aware, transferring land requires an ordinance to be approved. This ordinance was introduced at our last meeting, um, and we need to have a public hearing on this topic tonight. Tonight, the RSU and the architects are here as well to discuss the land transfer. They might have more to comment about with the land option agreement, which is the next item on the agenda. Um, but after we have the public hearing tonight, the council might, may take action on this ordinance. All right, we'll, uh, we'll declare the public hearing on the land transfer open at 6.02. Uh, anyone that would like to speak on this from the public? Or anyone on council that would like to speak about it? No one? We'll declare the public hearing closed at 6 it's still 6 <laughs> <coughs> What are Council's wishes regarding the uh, land transfer agreement? I have a question. Yeah. The Hilltop land, what? why don't we want to keep some of that? I mean, you're, you're looking for a place to move that playground. Right, we're going to be, that's that's the goal is to keep some of the land up at Hilltop. For that purpose? For the ballparks and the playground. Uh, my understanding, that this agreement, this ordinance, uh, is just to approve it, the land transfer. It doesn't, it doesn't state any of the facts of what it will be or anything else in this ordinance. Is that correct? correct. Yeah, it just to simply the ordinance allowing the sale to happen. Okay. And at some point in the future, likely with this, uh, the next item on the agenda, is where those details will be hashed out and the council would have to approve that separately. All right. Motion to accept the ordinance. We have second. We have a seconder. All those in favor? Unanimous. Now, the next one is the uh, land option agreement with the RSU 39. Manager, please. As part of the land transfer for the school project, uh, the attorneys for RSU 39 have drafted the land swap agreement. The agreement is all-inclusive of the properties that will be switched in hands between all the parties. On the next page is a summary of the lands that will be swapped. Following that is the full agreement that is up for discussion tonight. Um, we did raise two issues with the RSU attorneys. Uh, one of them was paying for damages if Park Street's being closed. Uh, that has been addressed in the draft that was sent out late Friday afternoon and was in the digital council packets. The other item that needs to be addressed is the transfer of land at Hilltop. Um, we do want to make sure that we are keeping enough land at Hilltop uh, for the playground up there. Uh, staff would like to see a park remain in that area of the city and we believe it's something that can be worked out between all the parties. Uh, we just need to hammer out those details. So the agreement is up for discussion tonight. The RSU and their attorneys are present here tonight to ha answer any questions the council may have. I do not believe we should have passed this agreement tonight. I think there's some things that need to be worked out and modified. 
But I think this is a great chance to have a first run at, at the draft um, for the council to have any of their questions asked, answered, or if things need to be researched more to come back with other answers. And I think we can look to have this approved potentially at a meeting in May. All right, well, I'll, I'll throw it open to council. I know there's a lot of questions, and maybe everybody can ask mine before it gets to me. So, anyone from council that. Uh, Councilor Martin? Yeah, my biggest concern is number four, uh, as far as Soderbergh uh, getting built off. I just want to make sure that's about board. Uh, Nobody else is a competing interest. I mean, the city never advertised at some point that we'd like to have built up. You know what I mean? You were approached, and now it's written down here. I just want to make sure. It's and, and perhaps the attorney or somebody um, <coughs> from the RC can better answer that. I also have that same concern. I was wondering why the economic development piece is attached to this to begin with. Okay. Yeah, also a question I had. I don't know why it's even in here. It has nothing to do with the thing between the city and the RSU. Um, David Callan, uh, attorney for the RSU. I think the reason that it was put in here is um, as part of the um, the park conversion, there are some things that need to be, some buildings that need to be removed, and I think that um, part of the discussion occurred with uh, Mr. Soderberg removing some of those buildings, and that was discussed in part of, as part of this overall concept that was being discussed among all the parties, and so it was kind of all put in as one. Um, what we would need for uh, approval on May 13th doesn't have to address the hilltop issues as long as um, it can address everything that uh, needs to go into the National Park Service application um, for all the issues surrounding Teeth Park. So if, uh, if there are certain aspects regarding hilltop that the um, council would prefer to have kind of pulled out into a, a, a separate agreement that was addressed later, um, then that's something that we could do as long as we were able to kind of get every component that the Park Service needs to uh, to have in front of them. In well, the I, I think that is our concern, that the economic development part shouldn't be a part of this agreement between the city and, and the school. So uh, if that can be removed, well, I think I, that's what should be done. I, I think the reasoning is the, one, the extra 1.6 acres down at Sinkhawk but maybe if we kept enough at Hilltop to cover that 1.69, then we could separate the two issues. That's right, uh, Councilor Martin. Um, for us to make the six effort agreement work, uh, we needed land next to Sinkock, and, and Soderberg family was willing enough to give that back to us, to the school, to give back to the town, to extend that 0.66 acres or what it was there for next to Sinkock. So, and I think that's kind of a package deal with the land. Um, with the school and then the hilltop packets was what's thrown in there. Um, I did talk to Carl in that even if the hilltop thing never works out and it's just a moot point, he's still going to give the land um, next to Sincock so the 6F requirement can get on to Philadelphia. It's kind of, it's it been in a stagnant state right now and we kind of, you know, are losing some time that we should lose. But I think that's where it came out, that extra land that the uh, Soderberg family is going to give to us to help make this package uh, better for and everything. I think Hilltop got rolled in there. So. so then the economic part doesn't have to be in this agreement. Hilltop doesn't, but we do need to have that land next to Sinkoff in there, too. That's right. But you've already stated that he's going to give that to you. That's right. Regardless. Regardless. So, right. and we talked again, the economic today. development part <coughs> doesn't have to be in here, then. Correct. Okay. And we'll, we'll double check, but I'm, I'm pretty sure there. Yeah, That's kind of what we that. talked about earlier when we were sitting over there. Why is this there? <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Anyone to go? Yeah, Perio. I've got a question. Um, okay, on this side you've got all this property that you want to transfer over. Do we have something on this side that kind of puts it in writing, maybe, or kind of gives us a guarantee or um, an, an agreement in writing that 
tells us what what is involved in the new school. For instance, I don't want to see um, a surprise in the, in the city be on the hook, perhaps for a million, two million, three million. We don't. You're you're seeing what you want here, but we're not seeing what we're actually going to get or what the agreement's going to be on the new school. You understand what I'm saying is that we have nothing, we have nothing to balance the scale here. You know, I think you're talking about like the school itself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You, we're going to build a new school. That's okay? right. Okay. And supposedly the the Department of Education will build us a school, and if we take what they're willing to pay for, okay, it shouldn't cost the city any money. That's correct. Do we have that somewhere in writing? We don't, and that's we have an information meeting Wednesday uh, for the park and rec and for the new school. If the community voices a concern that they want more on that new school than what the state's given us, at that point in time, it would cost the locals additional. Right, money. but isn't that a separate thing on the on the referendum? Don't you be, uh, don't you vote on the school, and then if there are extras that the city wants, they can vote on exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. But shouldn't we have something in writing? that at least tells us what the minimum that, that the city can get um, for this, for the land transfer and for what we're going to get for the school, what they're willing to pay for, the minimum of right. what they're willing to pay for with no it's, money coming It's kind of two here. separate topics. There's the yes. site and then there's the building. So we have to do a, a site approval and then we have to do the building approval. And that's Wednesday night's meeting is going to talk about. I have heard from citizens that want uh, either another gym or a larger gym. I say we're giving up four gyms, we're only getting one gym, and they don't like that because of all the, the community use of the gyms. So that's the only thing I've really heard to expand on that new school. Everything else is a pretty good school, and you're going to show everybody that on Wednesday. Right. Okay, but I guess what I'm saying is you want this passed, and it would be in writing, and we would sign it. But on the other side, what the city is getting for the school, there's nothing in writing, there's nothing yeah. signed. No, just that's because we're only using the site right now. That's what we're talking yeah, this about. This doesn't pertain to the, to school, the school, just the just site. Just the site. Okay, just the yeah. site. Yeah. Okay. That, those are good questions, but okay. it's just the site. All right. So uh, in follow up on that, that would be the same deal as when we go over to Tea Park and discuss what's going to go there. So and that's they, they, want a, they want a pool or some sort. That's exactly right. And uh, we are going to be... Either way, the city would be on the hook for that as well. Wednesday night, that's the, the rec department. The commission's going to do that part, and the school's going to do the okay. school, and they're going to do that site, what you want there. Do you want tennis courts, pool, and see what the community tells us. And that's part of our 6F requirement that we have to give to Philadelphia to show them what, what is wanted and what is needed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, my name is Alan Cunningham, architect of PDT Architects. Um, and I just wanted to introduce uh, Chelsea Lipham. She's our architect with our office, who's been working on the NPS application, and David Kalin from um, Drummond Woodson. Uh, and they've been working really hard at putting together this package. It just if I could address your question, something about the big picture. We have to get site approval from the Department of Education first. And in order to do this, we need right title and interest. We have to have control of the property. So that's why we're going through all this work, so that we can go on to the next steps. And they all take time. The National Park Service is going to take some time to review this. There's a certain waiting period for review. They have to have certain components into that and appraisals. Then we've got to go to the uh, Department of Education and get site approval. <coughs> and then we've had a successful <coughs> straw vote on this site. Uh, and then we're going to be coming back to the public again for a concept approval. And that will include the overall budget, the design, and uh, more of the details. It won't be complete at that point, but we will have firmly set what the schedule is and what the budget is. So there's going to be some more opportunities here, finally culminating with a public referendum. So that's kind of the big picture. But we really need to take care of the, the MPS uh, and, and get before those things. Department of Education on that site approval. So is there going to be one referendum or would there be two referendums on this? Uh, hopefully meaning, there meaning be just one. You know what? Well, yeah, and that's that's the question I have. So the referendum that, that we do would entail the uh, the actual cost of the school, including any extra amenities that people have brought up and said we would want this and we want that and so on. And how would those be determined? By a straw vote? At some meeting at the school with 300 people? 
you know. That's the answer we're getting, exactly. Well, that, I mean, that's just... And then you're... What are you, when are you looking at the vote to have this, the referendum? When would that be? Uh, we're looking at a referendum uh, November, December. Of this year? Of this year. Okay. If everything falls into place. Yeah. If we get, yeah. you know, I mean, we need to stay in touch with your community and make sure they're being listened to. And uh, Wednesday is part of our presentation, as part of a way of connecting and keeping them in touch with what's going on. And then we'll take it to the next steps. Well, we've got to get the option agreement in place that will be contingent on a successful referendum. And then that brings another question to my mind. If you do have the referendum, and it's for basically the school, which is covered by the state, the cost, but then there are some things, whether it's bigger gyms or this or that, they'll be included on that referendum then. And what if the population at that time votes it down because of the extra costs that are going to come back on the taxpayers? What happens then? Uh, my experience has been um, sometimes it's a multi-ballot question. Do you want an auditorium? Do you want okay. to spend another $5 million to right, do an not, auditorium yeah, right. or not? And so we'll have a successful referendum, but all the extras failed. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I think that's important. It identifies, I mean, there may be somebody out there in your community that's willing to step up and say, I, gee, I want, I want this, I want another, you know, 100 parking spaces or something. We don't know what it is, but we put it out there, and if it becomes significant enough, we put it on the, you know, get your permission, get it on the ballot, so we can do that at the referendum. All right. This is a little off topic, but why would you design a K-8 school that big with, that would allow gym time for about once every two weeks for each classroom? I mean, it's almost like a setup to me that, boy, we, we can only afford this much and we're going to buy all that stuff and then they're going to want another gym and they'll pay for it. But it, it there must be specs on how, how many gyms you need for a K-8 school by the size of the school. We, because we're, we're partners with the Department of Education and we know we're on a fixed budget, we're really delivering what, a K, what the K-8 um, standards and, and specifications <coughs> call for. For middle school size gym, but there must be, okay. there must be state requirements on how much gym time how these kids gym time these kids yeah. should have, and it doesn't add up with the number of classrooms there's going to be in that building, oh. and one gym and seven periods a day. Yeah. We've also got a, a multi-purpose room that goes along with that uh, in this program that's included and has been approved uh, by the Department of Education in this budget. So they are providing a multi-purpose room, which is another another space that you'll have for uh, programs for the younger grades. So. Okay, thank you. So a question I have is uh, the, you know, I think it's more related to this agreement is the new city land, um, both where the learning center is and where Sincock is. I I I guess would assume after this week's meeting that we'll have more of a idea of what's going to be on there, how it's going to be situated? As far as ball fields and parks and... You mean after Wednesday's meeting? Yeah, after Wednesday's meeting. Yeah. We'll have a better idea so that when it comes to our next meeting, we actually have something to say, agree to, we right? Have a preliminary, there's a preliminary yeah, we have a drawing, drawing of the of well, new proposed park. You're talking T, t Park. We talk about nope. the UT Park at Singapore. Yeah, the new I did learning center. Yeah. yeah, we've got preliminary drawings for that. Those are it. Okay. Yeah, here's 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 the new T Park. This is our preliminary uh, uh, plan, if you will. Let me, let me get that right. I'm gonna turn it this way. Hmm. Uh, this is this is Bennett Drive. I'm sorry. Let me turn this a little bit here. Let's see what we get. How's that? So uh, basically what we're doing is we're uh, relocating these two uh, buildings related to the rec department. There's a storage building and there's what is called a park building. And we're relocating, uh, providing new ones over here. Uh, for the park building, we're going to include a lot of uh, the elements that we've been working out 
uh, as part of a pool complex uh, for the eventual add of the splash pad. Uh, we're getting uh, four tennis courts. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, four basketball courts. There are two basketball courts. Excuse me, two basketball courts. Uh, we're getting a new uh, uh, play field complex. Uh, we're getting new parking. Uh, and that's, you know, this is really how much we've had probably, I would say, half a different, dozen different ideas or designs that have been working with yeah. Jerry. And so far, this one here is the one that the Rec Commission uh, really likes. There's, there's still some massaging that needs to be done on it, but um, the way that it's laid out right now, that's that's where we we're tending to go towards, is, is that way there. Pending any public input from We've what? been putting it on, we've got some public comments, but we're, Wednesday night we have, to, uh, we have to satisfy the National Park Service and we have to have public comments on that. And the reason why, one of the reasons why we have the ball field laid out the way it is, uh, because we've got residential roads on two sides of that ball field, uh, lighting's gonna be, lighting's gonna be an issue we want to make sure that we're pointing as many of the lights as we can away from the residential area. Um, we've also designed it, the Rec Commission and I, we've discussed it several times. We're going to design it and, and install a removable uh, outfield fence so that when we're done with softball, we can open up that fence, take it down, and we can open it up for our See, uh, care who cares about kids. If there's a carnival that comes in or anything that we want to do, soccer, we can open up the outfield fence and we're not going to have a, a ball field fence in our way. So we have one time to make this right. Uh, we want to make sure that we, we get it exactly the way we, we want it because we're not going to be able to go back and, and change things up as, as we want. So we've really, really been looking at it. Uh, Sue and, Sue and uh, Jane are here from the Rec Commission. We've really been looking at it. And so far, this is, this is the, the plan that seems to be what we what we think would the, the community would like. Yes? I have one question on this and then I have another one afterwards. But uh, the splash pad and the basketball courts, uh, they're currently on land that's been tentatively dedicated for something else is? Correct. We've we discussed it again with the commission. Um, because the land that we're getting on Learning Center is not quite as big as what we're getting from, that we're giving up from Teague, we felt that if we take a little bit of our overflow parking lot, uh, we could do a little bit more with the property. So we've, I think we've taken, what, 65, 65 feet or so? Is that what we've got, Al? Uh, Off the property line. You mean, you mean away from here, or? No, from, from the learning oh, center property line down into our, a little bit of our overflow parking lot is going to be utilized for potentially the splash pad and the yeah, basketball court. Yeah, at the most. Yeah. At the most. It's actually more like a parking yeah. length, a little over parking length. Okay. And then uh, my next question is on the piece of property on Sincock Street. On our, on our assess our assessment for taxes, it's at 5700 and the assessor, probably according to the yellow book, correct, has it valued at $23,000. Did they know that there's some wet land in the back end of that, or did they not know that? Um, that was indicated in the report. And there was an adjustment then for a topographical or, or, or inability probably to use that, that work, and it still... That's quite a, quite a difference. That's why I'm asking that question. Okay? I'm not sure. I can go back and review that. Uh, yeah. What, do, you, do you have a copy of the assessment? Uh, I don't think I have a copy of the appraisal. Can, can, can a copy of the assessment be made available to us? <coughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. The other question that I had, that, you know, this, this real estate transfer agreement, and I asked this the first time this was all discussed, uh, you're asking council to, to approve this agreement. Is this agreement approved on the other end already? From the Board of Education or whoever has to approve it on that end? No, it, no, this is not, no, this is not uh, been approved by the Department of Education. It's yeah. not pre-approved. This is 
like I sort of said before, it's, it's part of a process. They need to get site approval. We need to write title, uh, title and interest, and we've got to make sure that the property is secure so that we can take it to the next stage. This agreement, this option, is contingent on a successful referendum. Okay? Yep. So we've got to go, we've got to do the site approval, and we've got to do the concept approval. So there's nothing, they haven't approved it. They haven't approved it yet. So they will when they get, hopefully, when we get our site application, everybody feels like. They will, hopefully. Not necessarily, but hopefully. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's, yeah, they, I, that's yeah. my problem with this, is, you know, all of this that puts it on us first doesn't mean that it's all going to happen. It's just, you know, you, we've got to approve everything from our end first. I mean, if they approved it, then we could come back to us and, we, yeah, we, then we could approve it. We know it's all solid and it's going to go this way. But. We, we have to, it's one of the uh, components of our site application that we have to have in place is to show you know, title and interest and control of the site, whether it's a singular site or it's made up of multi-parcels, which we see many times. And to address your question a little more, um, in, in a way, what the State Board of Education needs to see before they start in really engaging in the process is, do you have some sort of agreement that all this land that we're talking about that you don't own right now you actually might be able to do some, you know, you can actually put a school there um, in the end. Um, so ordinarily, if we were just dealing with uh, this straight real estate in a simple situation, and it's complicated a little bit by the 6F um, component, that, yep. which is the only reason really at this point we're even talking about certain amenities like the recreational fields. It would just be something as simple as kind of that the that the school or that the city was giving the school an option to purchase the property if a school project was ultimately approved there. And here, because part of being able to show to the Department of Education that we, we have the ability to put a school here, there are other stakeholders beyond just the city that have to kind of give their permission. The primary two being the Attorney General's office and, and the National Park Service both relating to Teague Park. And so all we're trying to do is tee up right now um, what would be sufficient for those stakeholders to kind of also say, yes, if, if a school's approved, this can all happen. But then as they've said, when all those details get worked out, <coughs> there's all that public input process, there's the referendum vote, and that's the ultimate, will a school go forward? And if if we can't come come up with a school that works um, on the site, then the real estate never transfers. And it's just a little bit more complicated than you would ordinarily see because we kind of have to agree up front. And you know, ordinarily the Department of Education would, would never be kind of putting in uh, putting money into recreational facilities on land that wasn't going to be part of the school. But we're able to work out a process where they are doing that for the city-owned land because it's necessary to satisfy the... So they have approved that. Process. Well, this, again, um, what we're doing right now is we're sending, we're trying to put together a package for the Park Service that says, um, here's what everyone, all the locals seem to have agreed is, is a reasonable, um, comparable park that serves the same community will you agree under your regulations that, you know, this money that you paid to improve Teague Park and the city as a result agreed and said, we won't use Teague Park for anything other than public recreation, including building an elementary school, unless we go through this process and we have another comparable park. So what we're trying to set up right now is an application to send to the park service where they say, yes, if all of this, if this is what everyone's agreed, make sense and they want, we'll let you kind of convert the existing T park to some other use, the elementary school use, um, and we'll draw a new, uh, and it's called a 6F boundary because it's from section 6F, the Land and Water Conservation Fund um, statute, but we'll draw a new 6F boundary around this new park and we're saying, okay, the money that we previously spent <coughs> and the park service interest that we previously spent in T park is kind of now transferred over to this new park. So that's, that's the one reason right now that we're even 
dealing with and looking at and asking you to, to agree to anything that involves the development and anything more than just, yes, we'll agree that this land is available for this process. So there is a caveat <coughs> that if the referendum gets uh, voted down, that land is not transferred. Yes, so it's basically, as a practical matter, there are a number of steps. If the Park Service says, no, this isn't sufficient, you need to come back with some other application, then, you know, all the stakeholders have to be satisfied, and nothing can happen unless the referendum is successful. So. Anyone else have any questions? Well, I, I think as uh, you mentioned, Manager Gleas, we don't have to vote on this tonight, I guess. And it's, uh, it's a fair amount to digest and, and consider. And I'm sure after this meeting there may even be some comments from other citizens about this agreement and their thoughts. And we'll probably speak to some of the councillors and that about it as well. So. Uh, I got one other quick question. Yeah. Will there be a... <coughs> initial drawing, initial concept on that um, sink oxide at our next meeting? We'll, we'll need to put, put one together for the National Park Service, so yeah. it'll probably be similar to what this mm -hmm. looks like. And All right. Okay. Anything else? All right. Well, so it sounds like they need assurance that we're going to agree to this. I mean, or are they? What, are we supposed to do anything tonight on this? No, we don't need to do anything tonight. It'll be back before the council again at our meeting in May, and at that point in time, we'll be looking for a council approval. If, if we get. Uh, if we get that decision, I may be able to stay on our timeline. So. All right. And it, and it sounds like the one thing that I'm taking away from this, we're going to separate the economic development. Were there yes. other comments that you wanted to see? Well, I, I think um, that this agreement should be rewritten accordingly, should it not? Yeah. To take that out? Yes. yes. That's, and so then and that will be, be the agreement that we will approve. Something. And, yeah. it, and if, so if the council has other significant changes other than that that they want to see it may then it would be helpful to have that guidance now right um but if that's the primary one then we'll expect to have that change back in front of you in i'm not aware of any others uh, but again the sooner that you can get that back to us the better as well uh, i know that manager police will send it along to us as soon as he gets it so all right Anything else before we move along? Next item is the discontinuance of Kelly Road. Manager, please. We've gone out to RFP for the appraisal services for the project to help us determine what the damages would be. Uh, we received the following RFPs back for the appraisal portion of the project. The low one came from Scott Appraisal Services at 9250 That price is substantially higher than what we anticipated them to come in at. Uh, given the fact damages would likely have to be paid to the abutting landowners, the total project costs outweigh the immediate benefits of discontinuing the road. So at this point in time, we recommend not continuing this project. Um, we do anticipate uh, coming back to the council in May with a list of roads, including the Kelly Road, uh, which we can ask the council to formally stop winter maintenance on. But legally, we can't act on that until after May 1st. All right. So we, we don't need any action on this tonight? I don't believe so. Unless someone wants to carry on with it, I guess, but we don't think that's the case. So. Demolition bids. We've got out for bids uh, on the demolition of 16 Sincock Street and 11 Miller Washington Street. For both projects, we will be billed separately for disposal fees at Track Community. I'm estimating those fees to be about $4,000 per property. 16 Sincock was declared dangerous in order to be removed by the City Council last year. Uh, the house had severe damage to it due to a fire. The owner has not complied with the order, nor has he made any attempt to contact the city about this either. The cost of this project will be assessed to the property and uh, put on the property taxes. The low bid uh, on that piece was Massey Earthworks for $7,733. 
11 Lower Washington Street was tax acquired by the city in 2014. The home and the garage on this site certainly meet the definition of slum and blight. The cost of this project will be paid for out of the tax acquired property remediation reserve. Uh, currently we have about 45400 in that account. The low bid on that one was also from Massey Earthworks in the amount of 7280 And staff is recommending the council approval for the low bid on the project. Uh, manager, the tax acquired property remediation reserve, is that in the TIF fund? Is that part of the TIF fund? No. That's separate. That's uh, the line right there, um, 37307. That's a portion of all of the tax acquired properties that we sell. A portion of that revenue goes into that remediation fund so that we have a, a balance to take care of properties. Uh, but in our TIF accounts, mm -hmm. do we not have a fund in there for slum and blight removal? We do have a fund in there for slum and blight removal within the district. Um, okay. The district is right down Lower Washington Street. The cemetery is inside the district. 11 Lower Washington is not in the district. Okay. And what about the other property? It's not in either, huh? No. That one we can't use TIF funds at because it's a dangerous spill and council declared yeah. dangerous and this is following through right. in order to have it removed. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions about this? We get a motion. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. I'm opposed. Oh, sorry. Opposed. It's passed. Next is a grant resolution. So we're working on a grant application to the Northern Border Regional Commission, MBRC, to construct a four-bay tea hangar at the airport. Total project cost for this is estimated to be 415000 The MBRC grant will pay for 250000 As this is an airport project, the state would pay 5% of the total cost, which is 20750 The remaining 144250 would be paid for by the <coughs> with our entitlement funds. The project had been tentative, tentatively planned for 2018, but if we're successful with the grant, we could do it ahead of schedule. The project would have a positive economic impact to our community. We've been in conversations with an aviation company that's interested in expanding into our area and to offer flight instructions and aircraft rentals. This could certainly create some jobs here in Rooster County. Having more airplanes based here in Caribou also means there'd be more work available for fresh air, which does aircraft maintenance here in Caribou. The hangar would also help us to increase tourism opportunities. There's a large number of people that come to northern Maine to snowmobile, hunt, and fish. Having an indoor place for them to park their aircraft on a short term basis would lead to, could lead to more tourism and uh, tourists coming to Caribou in Northern Maine. As part of the application process, we need the council to approve the resolution, which is on the following pages. Any questions or comments from council? I guess I don't understand what, with our entitlement funds, what? So every year, uh, as part of uh, the airport uh, and FAA, every year we have set aside by for us by the FAA $150,000 that uh, is paid for out of things like airplane user ta or taxes and fees that you buy that you pay when you get airplane tickets that type of thing. So every year they set aside $150,000 and we can build that up um, for a maximum of four years up to $600,000. Okay, thank you. Okay. On the uh, co the. Uh, State pay five percent. I thought we had to split that with them as two point five with them and two point five for us. No, nope, that was changed three, four years ago. Um, so it's <coughs> ten, five years ago. So it's ten percent. So it's ninety percent federal, five percent state, five percent local. Is what the requirement is for airport okay. projects. Thank you. Any other questions? So basically, the manager at least we're saying this doesn't going to cost the city anything. It's all going to be taken care of with grant money and. Correct. Yep. So moved. Makes so it an good. easier decision. Sorry. Right. All those in favor? And one abstention. Approval of sale of tax acquired property. We received an offer from Robert LaPointe for the property at Map 19, Lot 22A, which is on the plant road in the amount of $3,000. This was the minimum bid amount when we put it out for bids last time. We did not receive any bids on it at that point in time. As per the tax acquired property policy, we can sell the property to someone who offers to pay the minimum bid amounts. Uh, we would, if the council wishes to sell the property, we would need them to approve it. 
So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Sell the property. <coughs> Other business? Yeah, the, the, in uh, city manager's note to us, he requested that possibly we have an airport committee meeting to talk about some issues at the airport. Uh, I'd like to make, set up a date and time. What's comfortable, Joe, Jane? Any? Set. Morning, noon, night? No. Noon? Yeah. Noon, noon, or afternoon? Okay, that's whatever works. Yep. Okay. Uh, what's uh, Friday look like? I have something at 1, but I could do uh, anything Eleven. before that or after about 1.30. 11? 11? 11 Friday? Any other business? Nothing? All right, so we have City Council and CEG Strategic Planning on May the 2nd. Here in the council chambers at uh, 5 o'clock. The regular city council meeting May 9th and a regular city council meeting on June 13th. And the airport meeting this, this Friday at 11 that was just mentioned. Is that it? All right, everyone. Well, thank you very much for coming. We'll be going to executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA subsection 4056D to discuss waiver negotiations with ASME. 220. Second. All in favor? We'll go to the second session.